Hello everyone. Today we will study Caged Bird. It's a poem by, it's a poem of protest by black African writer and she's a very famous writer, uh, Maya Angelou. She was a prolific writer, she was a storyteller, she was also an activist and she was actively involved throughout her life in the fight for equal rights for black African people. And um, she was also a singer, performer and dancer and her own life story was in fact very, very eventful and she's written a very famous biography, autobiography. Uh, and when she was very young, uh, she was abused and she lived without her parents. She lived for a very long time with her grandmother and uh, she had a very tough time actually growing up. but. This time uh, eventually helped her develop an interest in literature and um, and also various other arts. And we see that um, in many of her literature, uh, the things that she writes, there are elements of darkness and despair, as we will see in this poem as well. But at the same time, she writes about hope and the power of human will. And to some extent, this poem also has those elements. Her most uh, famous work is her own autobiography, which uh, was written in 1969, and it's called I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. And this poem actually in, uh, you know, in some ways takes that image forward. Uh, through her life, she was actively a part of American civil rights movements in 1950s. and. Uh, this poem is also thematically related to the poem of racism and racial discrimination. We see that the poem uses a free verse. There is no structural, uh, it's not contrived structurally. It doesn't follow any particular structure, uh, but it still has metaphors and a very rich imagery. So let me read this poem stanza by stanza and we'll see what are the themes that stand out. So I'll read this poem. A free bird leaps on back on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the current ends and dips his wing in the orange sun rays and dares to claim the sky. But the bird that stalks down its own narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. Now the first two stanzas easily we can understand that it's a contrast between a free bird and the caged bird. Uh, the first stanza actually highlights the privilege of the free bird. You know, he has great exposure. He can reach his potential. He can fly and he can go wherever he want. But the plight of the caged bird is a stark comparison as a stark is very, very different from it. The caged bird focus is just on his own emotion. He's not only engaged by the physical cage, he's not just physically engaged, but his mind also can't go beyond his need of freedom. And that's what he keeps singing about. So he is tied down not just by his physical uh, confliction, it's not just he's just not conflicted by. Uh, the cage but it's also his own emotions he's uh, as we see this particular sentence that he that she uses but the bird that stalks down his own narrow cage can seldom see through the bars of his rage so he's in a way trapped by his own rage and the word stalks here uh, very many students confuse this word stalks uh, with going and snooping around somebody this word stalk actually is just means means just you are walking angrily and you are stamping your feet in a small place so this is what stalks mean the word stalks means in this place uh, the cage bird has nobody to snoop around with right uh, so, um, so that's what this particular stanza means it's this caged bird is just angry he can't think of anything else but his freedom the caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still and his tune is heard on the distant hill for the caged bird sings of freedom here we see unlike the other two stanzas this has um, a rhythm this has also a rhyme 
trill, still, hill actually rhyme with each other. Herd and bird also rhyme with each other. So there is a rhyme. Uh, and this particular stanza stands out from the others. Um, and here the caged bird is singing with a fearful trill. It's not just um, uh, he's not happy, he's afraid. And he is he wants something, he yearns for something. And even though he does not know what he yearns for, he's still wanting. So um, he, he, it's the poet expresses that art is still not inaccessible to him. He can still express himself through his songs, through his music. Uh, but again, you know, the theme of this music, the theme of this song would still be his need, his yearning for freedom. But even so, he is able to express himself uh, whichever way he uh, in through his song and song in a way becomes the only way out for him let's look at the next stanza the free bird thinks of a, of another breed breeze and the trade winds soft through the sighing trees and the fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn and he names the sky his own here again we see that the free bird is able to get as much exposure that he wants he's able to live to his potential he is in fact taking his freedom for granted he doesn't have to think of freedom he doesn't have any time to think that this is something that others could be yearning for he doesn't think that he has this right to move around on his own will this is a theme which would only be known to the caged bird the free bird takes his freedom for granted. So it's a privileged free bird. But yet we see that um, the poet does not want to berate the free bird in any way. Um, this is the potential that even the caged bird can reach. But he is unable to reach this particular potential. The word worms waiting, there is alliteration here, dawn, lawn, this is assonance here, right? So um, uh, the the sound of awe in dawn and lawn is repetitive. So you have assonance and the word, the letter W, or the, the sound of wor is uh, repeating. So you have alliteration in these two places. So here again, we see there is a use of poetic devices and the bigger, biggest poetic device in this particular poem which I forgot to talk about initially is this metaphor. The metaphor is not just about the free bird and the caged bird. The deeper meaning is the contrast between the people who are free, that is the white people and the people who are bound by their own race which is the black people. So the analogy of the birds are actually being used. The birds are not just not just it's not just talking about the birds it's actually talking about people people who are bound by their circumstances and it's not just a bird who is caged it's a whole race that she's talking about so birds are here actually symbolic they are metaphors for larger themes larger uh, uh, larger goals and she's talking about the need for freedom um, for black african people or just black people in general uh, in, sorry, black, not black African-American people, but just black people, African people in general. Um, but a caged bird stands on the grave of his dreams. His dawn, his shadow shouts on a nightmare scream. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longs for still. And his tune is heard on the distant hill where the cage bird sings of freedom. Again, we see repetition here. We see that the cage bird is actually standing in his own um, grave or as it were of his own dreams. He, that's, his dreams are also limited. He's not able to dream as much as the free bird would. He's, uh, he's, he has nightmares. He does not have very pleasant dreams as we can imagine. And towards the end, the poet brings back the earlier stanza that she writes, which is actually a very, very powerful stanza, which talks about the fearful trill of the caged bird, that it's he's fearful, he's afraid, he is unable to um, express himself the way he would like to, but he sings of um, 
he sings with a pain and sadness in his heart and he sings of freedom so this is the theme that is touched upon by the poet maya angelo the image is that of the bird the imagery is that of birds and nature but the meaning is much deeper she actually is talking about race relations across the world if you want to hear more poems and if you want to learn more poems follow this channel and please like share and subscribe thank you